Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of PCs and EVs. In today's video, we're going to be benchmarking the uh, RTX 4090 TUF from ASUS. It's the TUF Gaming OC. We've already finished our benchmarks on the 4090 Gaming Trio. Make sure if you guys are looking at that card, you take a look on the channel. Um, I'm going to be comparing the two and obviously towards our baseline RTX 3090 as well. As far as what the test system is running, it's running a Ryzen 9 7950X on an ASRock Pro RS motherboard running the latest BIOS. Uh, we've got a Corsair H170i Elite LCD cooler, uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 6000 megatransfers per second, a 2 terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and an EVGA 1600 watt T2, all housed in the Corsair 7000X case. Let's jump right into benchmarking on this one. I've already done an unboxing on both this and the 4090 Gaming Trio. If you guys are interested in videos about those, make sure you guys take a look on the channel. As far as aesthetics wise, this card is definitely a very sleek design. It's just got the tough logo there with a nice RGB underglow. Um, definitely looks really good in this build, that's for sure. Now as for a baseline, the 3090 in I don't know if you guys can hear it, but this 4090 Tough has some pretty serious coil wine. Uh, it's definitely a lot more than the uh, gaming trio had. A um, little bit, probably about the same as what some of the more extreme 30 series cards have had. And definitely less than a 6900 XT Red Devil Ultimate I had. All right, so I previously with this MSI card had been able to get into about the 18, the 18,500 range uh, overclocked off camera last time. We are well past that. And this score right now is good for currently 40th in the world. We're gonna see how much farther we can push it, but we've already got plus 400 memory and plus 175 core. I'll admit I did not test this card past 350 memory, but it stopped at 165 core. This one's so far 200 core, and we're at an 800 memory, uh, and we just got an 18,825. To put it in perspective, in this same benchmark, the stock scores that I was I was seeing for overall scores were 17,945 for the ASUS card. And an 18,018 for the uh, MSI card. The best score I saw for the MSI card was around 18,500. Running plus 800 core, or no, sorry, plus 800 memory and plus 150 on the uh, core with the 133% power limit. We just scored a 26,976, which is a 13 to 1400 point increase, which is about a 5% uplift over stock from this graphics card. Man, this thing overclocks like crazy. That's an extra 900 points compared to our best efforts with the MSI card. Now, like I said, I, haven't, I didn't try pushing the MSI card as hard on the memory side, so maybe it could have clawed some of that back, but this card definitely is clocking a lot better than our MSI card. As far as thoughts overall, the ASUS Tough card um, stock operation is definitely a little bit worse than the MSI 4090 Gaming Trio. Um, if you just go in and open up an overclocking software and crank the power limit, it actually ends up slightly above st the stock operation of the Gaming Trio. I think it's just a little bit more power limited or something along those lines. Um, but realistically speaking, you're not going to notice the differences between any of the cards day to day. My specific model of the Tough has a little bit of coil wine, so it is a little bit more noisy. Um, but overall, they all score around 26,000 to 27,000 in Port Royal. They all score in the 18,000s in Time Spy Extreme, with around an 18,000 flat for the MSI card on average stock, and about an 18,200. Um, for the ASUS Tough with the power limit increased, and then an 18,825 was our best run, currently putting us in 34th place in the uh, Time Spy Extreme Hall of Fame. 
Now, as far as the graphics score uplift, we did get a full thousand points uplift on that. I just still have to run Time Spy. Um, I'll get back to you guys after I do that and let you know what the uplift in that was. But out of the box, the uh, Tough Card is doing slightly better than even the uh, overclocked MSI Gaming Trio when the Tough Card was stock. So it really d seems to depend on your resolution and your workload. Um, and realistically speaking, both of them run pretty cool, pretty quiet. Um, this one's definitely a little bit has a little bit more coil wine, but they both run sub 65 degrees Celsius. The coolers have definitely stepped up a huge amount since 30 series. I'm going to run that uh, Time Spy uh, benchmark and I'll get back to you with the results for that. Yeah, after looking at it, Time Spy Extreme scores are marginally higher. Nothing to write home about. We're talking like half a percent um, from overclocking on this ASUS Tough. So realistically speaking, you're gonna see your biggest gains with overclocking with ray tracing stuff. Um, in rasterization, this card is already plenty fast at stock. If you need a little bit more performance, you can try and overclock, but this is already the fastest graphics card we've ever seen. And if you guys aren't, if this doesn't uh, do it for you, there, I'm sure they'll be releasing a 4090 Ti in a year or so. Uh, so you can always buy one to hold you over and then sell it when the 4090 Ti comes out. Because obviously if you demand the top level of performance, you got to have money to back it up. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of PCs and EVs. As always, I'm Thomas. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want me to test in the future. And uh, I'll get back to you guys on, with more uh, exciting PC content here in the future. And as always, I'll see you guys around.